Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, my name's Ron Champion for those that don't know me. Um, I am a kayak bass fishing angler, uh, fish uh, some of the bigger trails. So, uh, but what I'm here to do to talk to you about today is I am at the legendary Fort Stewart uh, military base um, down in uh, uh, just outside of Savannah, Georgia. Um, this is a gym. I am on Big Mets Lake today. Uh, this is Fort Stewart's Trophy Lake. They don't open this lake up but just a few days uh, every quarter. Um, now it's been open, this will be the fourth day in a row that it's been open and I've fished two out of the four days. So I've been here uh, a couple days. I've caught some smaller fish, not caught anything big, but I think I got onto something late yesterday afternoon and I wanted to come out and shoot a film today. I found some fish I think deep. Hopefully we'll be able to catch them on a big swim bait. Um, and I'll be throwing some grande bass, throwing my rattlesnake. That is my bait. Everybody knows how much I love that bait, have so much confidence in it. Uh, if you don't have that bait, you really need to get some of the grande bass rattlesnakes. The 4.75 and the 6.5, they're all, their their whole line of tackle is amazing. But we are here at uh, Big Matt's Lake on Fort Stewart. Hopefully it's going to be a great day. Um, there's a lot of standing timber. I'll do some shots of the actual lake to where you can see it. But this lake hopefully will produce uh, a big fish for us today. Uh, like I said, I've been here for two days. Uh, prior to this one, this will be the third day out of the four that it's been open. Not caught anything big yet, um, but uh, I know they're here. Um, I believe five of the largest bass in the state of Georgia on record have came from this body of water. So uh, it'd be awesome if we could make that number six. But thank y'all for watching my videos. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Hopefully we can make a good film today and uh, let's go fishing. yesterday I caught a couple fish out in this deeper water um, the water temperature is about 92 to 93 degrees right now so it's very hot um, very hot make sure that camera angle is right so so I, I pulled out I got here late yesterday evening I pulled out here to the, some of this deeper water and I was throwing this Bastrix swim bait uh, these swim baits are amazing. Uh, you can get these swim baits from uh, tackleexperts.com um, uh, or the cabin bait and tackle for all the guys that are up there in Kentucky, uh, around Kentucky Lake, Lake Barkley. Um, go see my boy Kevin Baxter. He will hook you up. Uh, but they have a great selection of these Bastrick swim baits and uh, uh, anything you want tackle wise. But uh, so I caught some fish on the outside of these trees. I'll turn the boat so you can actually see what I'm talking about. 
I fished all up in the trees. It's about 10 to 11 to 12 foot deep all through here. And uh, I fished all through the trees, never caught a fish in the thick stuff. But on this outside edge, uh, there's still trees under the water here. You just can't see them. Um, I don't know if it's maybe these don't get fished as much, there's not much pressure, but I caught some fish out here uh, on some of these isolated ones way out from the, the thick stuff. So let's see if we can't catch a fish or two. I'm just just keeping this thing probably a foot, two foot off the bottom, reeling it real slow. I just have to one hit it right there. You got to. There's a lot of wood down there. It'll come over the wood. Like the swim bait, you gotta you gotta let them take it. Like they'll they'll hit it, but you just they load up on it, um, and that's all you're doing. You just as they load up on it, and then you just you know, pull into them because they have to inhale this bait. Um, that was I had had one just hit it first cast. That's a good sign. Maybe it'll be a good day. I'm just letting it sink to the bottom and then reel it kind of fast to get it up, get the tail moving, and then just reel it real slow. This wind's going to play a little bit of a pain. There he is. Yep, there he is. Hit it second cast. Good fish too. Good fish. Yeah, stay down. Ah, stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good solid fish. Not a giant, but uh, yeah, that's a good start. Second cast. I knew there was one that hit it the first cast, so maybe there's a school school of fish there. So second cast, that's probably about a 16 inch fish. I need to take a photograph of it because I've got some online tournaments that I'm in. So that's a good way to start. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're rigged up again. Changed the bait out. Got a new Bastrix swim bait on. Check my line. Gonna, I get hung up quite a bit in these treetops. And you have to go get it but if you just don't pull it real hard and you just get over top of it and shake it there's so much weight on this swim head a lot of times it'll just pull itself loose This right here is what I don't understand. You can see that I just reeled in somebody's line. It's braided line with a hook on it. That's the reason it felt weird when I threw it out there. So you got a you got an amazing place to fish like this here at Fort Stewart. And uh, man, now this happened yesterday. I reeled in a, a big uh, big thing of line. Um, guys, please pick up after yourself. You know, don't throw line in the water. Um, it's uh, it, it's no good. It's no good for our environment. It's no good for the fish. So just uh, please just clean up after yourself, right? That's no good. One thing I can say about kayak fishermen is uh, they are very much about the environment and uh, keeping these resources um, pristine. Um, I always come back from a day of fishing with more trash in my boat than I than when I got on, but then when I put the boat in the water. Um, I always bring a bunch of stuff back in, uh, pick up stuff off the bank, floating in the water. I know a lot of fishermen do that and that's, that's good, but uh, the fishermen that's out there throwing the stuff in the water, please stop.
thing come off. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, uh, it's just going to happen sometimes when you're throwing a big swim bait. I was wanting to get him, bring him down the side of the boat. Usually I would have netted that fish, but uh, it's all right. It was probably, maybe it might have been a little bit bigger than the one we just caught, but so I got something working here. So what I found yesterday, actually, these fish are here, and I was hoping that it is got to do with maybe it, it's hot, so they're going to stack up around these trees, around the base of these trees in the shade. I know there's a lot of wood down on the bottom. Uh, what was left from these tree tops that fell down. So let's. Uh, I know exactly where that fish was. It was right there. So let's see if there's another one in there. If I remember correctly, I uh, caught one of the fish I caught yesterday off of these was almost in that exact same spot right there. Oh, I lost that fish too trying to get the camera turned on. Oh, I hate that too. That was a better fish. I had a couple bites right here. It could have been the same fish both times biting. So I'm gonna make another cast in there. See if there's more than one fish. <sighs> there's a school of fish right here. They're hitting it. Big, but fifteen inches, fifteen inch fish. And I'm going to go up there again. I'm going to have to change the bait because they ripped that one wide open. Be a little bit too far to the right on this one. Give it a shot and let's see. Nope. 
Kentucky Lake ledge fishing. Get on the school, get them fired up, and just keep chunking at them. swim bait baby Kevin Baxter's the man turn me on to these tackleexperts.com bastric swim baits you better get you some pretty fish he's not gonna do anything for us for tournament 15 inch fish let him go Bait good, bait still good. Make a no. lot of times if you get on a school of fish and you catch one the next one you catch will be closer to the boat and then the next one will be even closer than that it kind of pulls the school to you because they're following that bait and when that fish is fighting a lot of times those other fish they're right up there trying to take the bait away from it so it kind of pulls the school off it might take them a second to reposition getting it real good they're just they're smaller fish 
I'll tell how many of them down there. Pretty fish though. no more BMC hooks can promise you that this hook is still razor sharp that's too many fish I've lost today there won't be no more of those hooks don't buy these hooks reason that fish should have come off. I had that fish stuck. Still recording? Yep, you're still with me. All right. Try it again. A little fish. See what we got. We got. That's a 16 inch. So I can use this for kayak wars. Snap a quick photo of him. 16 inches. Got him. Time for a fish. I just did. Now I got that fish in and I lost several. You saw I sharpened that hook. Now that hook was sharp, but I actually took a file out, sharpened it a little bit more, and I actually got that fish in. Whether or not that made a difference, I don't know. But uh, at least I got that one in and uh, pulled my bait up pretty bad. But let's see if we can't catch another one. But I, I set the hook on that fish. And then I reeled down and I said it drove it in again. So, uh, but when the fish flopped in the net, he still come off. So, who who knows? But let's uh, let's try it again.
different direction. Call fish. Now they're supposed to eat it. Fixing to go throw a frog. Sun's starting to get low. I got a spot. I've caught some fish on a frog the last couple of days. Nothing big, but it make for some good action if they're in there. So. Disappointed I've lost so many fish. But uh but I'm happy that I figured something out. And I figured this out late yesterday. I wanted to get here and have some day, daylight to throw this big swim bait. Um, once it gets dark, uh, I won't be able to do much filming, um, but I will continue to fish for a little bit. Um, if I catch anything good, I'll, I'll take some pictures and I'll throw them up in with a video. Um, I've caught some, like I said, 16 and 17 inch fish is all I've caught three times that I've been here in the last four days. So maybe we get lucky and at least catch one big fish. water two foot three foot out to about four foot in the middle for some lily pads back here in the back uh, see if I can't catch some fish around the edge of this grass on no spro bronze eye popping frog I usually throw black or brown I had this one tied on already so I'm gonna throw it um, got a little yellow in it I like more natural colors than anything I don't like all the crazy stuff Water in the face. 
That's what I'm talking about. I want you to look at my face. I got water all over me. That's why you love kayak fishing, is because it's up close and personal. Frogfish. And he inhaled it. And I changed colors, went to the black, and got a good fish. Looking good too. A long fish. That fish will help. For, but we will take it. tell you what I'm doing when I fish a frog and people ask me all the time well how do you fish a frog you know they say well, I can't catch a fish on a frog or I lose fish on a frog well there's a way to fix all that can't catch a fish on a frog you're not fishing the frog enough uh, you gotta throw it um, you can't throw it for five minutes ten minutes and then be done with it I mean I threw that yellow frog earlier for you know, 20 minutes, didn't have, I have one one little bite on it. Changed to black, and I've caught two fish within five minutes. So, changing the colors helps. But uh, the water is just slick right now, glass slick. So you don't, don't work the frog, don't overwork the frog. Fish it easy, just a little pop, a little twitch. It's, it's slow, it's tedious, but that's what you gotta do to catch fish on a frog when you got conditions like, like this, when it's just slick as glass. There's hardly any wind blowing right now, so you gotta be a little bit more subtle. Um, if it, there's a lot of chopping stuff on the water, a lot of times I won't even throw a frog, I'll throw a buzz bait. Um, but I love throwing a frog when it's like this, but I fish it really, really slow. You gotta have some patience with it. I got 65 pound braid on here. Uh, got my All Pro Rod frog rod. Um, it is a uh, beast of a rod and then the other thing I do is I actually bend my hooks um, I bend my hooks out so if you can actually see that frog how much those hooks are bent bent out um, it's not as weedless it gets hung up more but uh, you will hook a whole lot more fish if you're fishing real thick vegetation you can't really bend them out this far but if it's real sporadic and you're fishing the edges and stuff you can get away with bending them out a whole lot more and it's real sticky you can't run your finger down there without your uh, finger getting stuck in those hooks makes a big difference when you're fishing a frog around sparse vegetation like like what I'm fishing here I bend the hooks out a lot alright before it gets too dark on me I wanted to just do a little closing on what I've done today um, I'm gonna keep fishing it's getting dark pretty fast um, hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit on film uh, with a frog, but it might be too dark to do a closing on the video. So uh, uh, I really appreciate y'all watching um, my videos. Um, swim bait was definitely a ticket. Um, today's the last day I'll get to fish this lake uh, for probably a few months. Uh, it won't be open again, uh, but I learn a lot. So the next time I come out here, I'll know what to expect. Should have a lot better time um, and hopefully catch some bigger fish. Um, but uh, the swim bait was definitely the ticket. Um, I was throwing 
uh, a yellow belly frog and uh, now I'm throwing a black frog with just a little bit of yellow in it. Um, to me, a frog, I throw mainly just basic colors, black, brown. Um, I did have a yellow one tied on. The only reason I had it on is because I was throwing it at night uh, last night. And at nighttime, I don't think it, it really matters. They're more attracted to the sound. So uh, I'm going to throw this black frog with just a little bit of yellow in it uh, the rest of the evening around these grass and the lily pads. Hopefully, I'll be able to catch a fish on video and it'll show up. But um, um, again, thank y'all for watching. I appreciate it. Um, if you get a chance, take some kids fishing. Um, get them out from behind the video games, uh, off the couch. Um, get them out in the outdoors. Let them enjoy it. If you don't have kids, find somebody that's got kids. Uh, I promise you, you'll get more enjoyment out of it uh, than they do. Uh, you'll make memories that will last those kids a lifetime. They will remember that fishing trip. They ain't going to remember that video game they played today uh, in, in 10 years from now or 15 or 20 years from now. But they will remember that fishing trip that you took them on. So uh, take the kids hunting, fishing, just get them outdoors. I appreciate y'all watching. I'm Ron Champion. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Make, 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 make the ground shake.